gonna try and keep this video as diplomatic as possible. Although I do emphasize the word try. I have a particular pet hate about a certain type of YouTube video that I keep seeing popping up. The, is this camera still relevant in whatever year it happens to be type video. I've seen a few recently on the a7 III. Now that camera was launched back in April 2018. So it's coming on for four years old now. But I think the question of, is it still relevant or should you still buy it in 2022 is a bit ridiculous because nothing's changed. Now, I appreciate this is the age of the internet and people are free to publish whatever they like. And I'm sure there'll be people who hate this type of video and that's fine. And I of course accept that if I don't like a particular type of video, then I could just not watch it and move on, which I often do. But it doesn't stop me getting a slight twinge whenever I see a video like that pop up in my feed. I think what I partly dislike about them is I've seen a few where they're entitled something like, you know, should you still buy this camera in 2022, say. But then you look and the video was actually released in the middle of 2021 and they never referenced the year directly in the video. So clearly they're maybe just changing the titles of old videos to drag them back up the order, which sort of makes them more irrelevant. I mean, take the a7 III, for example. You can still buy that camera brand new right now. You couldn't get any more relevant if you tried. But even if it was an older camera in question, like the original a7, for example, should you still buy that in 2022? Well, if it suits your needs and the price is right, then yes. The year that it happens to be at the time makes absolutely no difference. The camera still performs exactly the same today as it did when it was first released. It's not like you'll be happily shooting with it at 11.59 on New Year's Eve and then at the stroke of midnight it suddenly becomes complete crap. The camera never changes. I've worked with portrait studios who are still rocking 5D Mark IIs. That's a 17 year old camera but they still use them because they still work. The photos it produces look just as good as when it was first released. They've not bothered moving on to something like the R5 or the R6 because it wouldn't change anything for them. Now that is not to say that anyone considering the R5 should just forget about it and buy the 5D2 because clearly there are many things the R5 has that the 5D2 doesn't, like much better video, better autofocus, higher resolutions, faster shooting speeds, etc, etc, etc. But if you're questioning should you sink a couple of grand into something like an R5, when in reality you're only ever going to be using it in situations that don't really call for any of those higher specs, such as a studio with complete control of lighting, no need for complex autofocus or video features at all, you're only ever going to be shooting single shot at a time and your, your output files don't need to be that big because you're only printing relatively small, then in reality there is no reason that you couldn't consider an older lower spec camera. The year that it happens to be doesn't change anything. I, I sometimes do work for a company shooting portraits at graduations, always in the previously mentioned circumstances. Studio lighting, single shot, static subject, only ever getting printed in small sizes, I used the Canon 60D for it, because I'd sooner put the wear on this than on my a7 III. Now, yes, the a7 III on paper is a far superior camera, but in those circumstances, it produces basically the same result. But nobody would ever suggest that the 60D is still relevant in 2022. It's a bit different with other technologies, such as phones or computer parts, because their environments have moved on without them. Like a phone from four or five years ago is not going to be as highly specced as a lot of modern phones, but maybe your circumstances haven't changed and you want to stay with the lower end phone. But because the market's moved on to newer technology, then a lot of the apps and software have kind of had to move on with them and move beyond the capabilities of the hardware in the older phones. For example, we used to have an iPad for the kids to use. Now, it was one of the older types of iPads, you know, with the original iPhone style connector plug. But we had it because it did what, what we needed it to do. The kids only ever watched YouTube and YouTube kids on it. So changing to a newer, faster iPad would have been utterly pointless. However, because the newer technology was then moving on, all of the software was moving on to be optimized for that and take advantage of it. And eventually it reached a point where while the iPad itself was still working fine, the apps on it were no longer becoming compatible. 
You don't get that with cameras. Editing software doesn't suddenly stop working with all the camera models. The lenses still all work the same and the pictures will still look exactly the same. Whether a camera is relevant or not is down to whether its specifications meet your requirements, not does it happen to be 2018 or 2022 when you're making the decision. Really, you should decide what you need from a camera and then find a camera that meets those requirements rather than stressing and panicking about always getting the newest, latest gear, even if it happens to be complete overkill. Was that diplomatic enough? I mean, what are your thoughts on the situation? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already done so, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.